Dimac channel, welcome. Right, today, unusual for this channel, I'm gonna be doing some setting. So, disclaimer, right, I'm a total noob at setting. I have some experience just from, I've tried it. When I started my apprenticeship, I was doing repairs quite often, so I was doing little setting jobs. But I was never trained up properly to do it. Uh, I've got very little experience, and uh, yeah, so it's likely, I'll, I'll do the job, I'll get it done, but people who have good training or a lot of experience setting may disagree or know better the ways or the tools I'm using. So if you are an experienced setter and you're watching this, very welcome to comment. Uh, if you you can correct my mistakes, and keep it friendly, I will happily learn from you. And then I could even make another video based on your comment and I'll try it your way and then compare it to my way and we can sort of talk about whether I found it easier, the finished result was better or whatnot. And then we're all learning together. So that's what this channel's about. I actually enjoy that kind of thing. So yeah, if you know better than me, please tell me and I will learn from you. So anyway, let's get into the video after I said thank you to some new patrons. We got uh, Mercedes Montoya written up there. Uh, yesterday, last night, it was Vicky Pierce, I think it was. Yeah, Vicky Pierce. And then literally a few minutes ago, sat down, uh, turned my phone on to get it ready for saying the new patrons. And then we got a new one a few minutes ago, Megan Falcon, Falconer. Megan Falconer, thank you very much guys. Really appreciate the patrons. The patrons literally make this channel possible. YouTube revenue is so small. It's, totally insignificant is the money I get from the patrons enable me to continue this channel and uh, if, you, if you just watch for free very welcome to do that happy to have you here but those free videos are possible for you because of the patrons so we should all appreciate the patrons <laughs> if you want to want to help me out uh, you can become a patron yourself by uh, visiting patreon.com forward slash dime out link in the description if you want to click on that you get a shout out on the next upload after you join you get access to the new youtube videos two weeks before they go public on youtube and then if you become a classic or an official patron you will get access to all the full instructional guides and then uh, official patrons will get ability to message me and i will personally help you out with your own jewelry making endeavors so yeah it's not just i ask money from you for for just doing the channel i, I try to give back a little bit as well <laughs> Again, disclaimer, total noob, but I'm just gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have a quick look at the girdle of my stone. It's been set on the corners, this is a cushion cut. How to make this mount, I've just completed a video. That's a patrons only video. Uh, that's on Patreon now, you wanna check that out. It's a tapered split, with the split V claws. The claws are tapered down to a point, or almost to a point at the bottom, with a daylight, straight daylight hole around the collet. And I made it specifically for this cushion cut stone. So. Set on the corners, I wanna look at the girdle, I wanna see how thick it is, because that will decipher what tool I use to cut in. I don't want a really sharp little cut when there's a big flat girdle gonna sit in there. So this is quite a flat on there, so I need to know that first before I just go ahead and start cutting up the claws. So anyway, so that gives me a bit of a hint on what to use, little tool. Next, I'm pushing it into the collet. to sort of double checking my mounting uh, precision really are uh, all all the claws are straight and even symmetrical now with their angles to drop in a stone in and uh, I want to see all four claws touching the stone. If it isn't, if they're not, there might be a problem with the mount or something else going on. But mine seems to be okay with the stone flat. But the stone is up high, yeah? I need to cut into the claws for the stone to drop down. So now I'm going to bend the claws back so the stone can drop right down and sit on top of the top bezel there. So check this out, I'm gonna bend this claw back, yeah, but if there's a sharp edge, you, I'm gonna put a, like a sharp dent on the outside of my claw, that'll need to be repaired. It could literally ruin it beyond repair. So what I've done is, you can see I put X on X, it's not immediately obvious to see there. What I did, last time I did this job, I had got a paper disc, that's not a paper disc in there, and uh, basically span that on the edge just to round it off a little bit. It just reduces the damage it's gonna do on the outside of the claw when I bend that back. I mean, you could get something like that and then hold that on the side, but it gets awkward holding it in there. You want it perfectly flat. I, I do think that's the best tool for the job. Some of these round nose snipes might be quite good, but then you're putting a dent on the inside. I don't know, it's a bit messy. I, I think that's the best one. So you're clamping it down the down the length and uh, it's only only really the outside little pivot point <laughs> you've got to worry about so yeah round off I think it's good advice you may even want a spare set of pliers two sets of these and just one of them have it rounded off I need to round mine off a bit more just like that 
just just a bit that'll do just taking that sharp corner off okay so let's bend these claws out of the way so with that rounded one on the outside obviously i'm not going right down to the collet i'm just going to hold it up a little bit just a bit above it and just carefully bend them all out of the way holding it the same height up every time and then bending them all back the same amount just so you don't get in a mess with your work you're doing everything's consistent so they're bent out of the way testing my stone on there it's possible i might have to bend about more it's not the end of the world is it but i think you're better off not i think you're better off not bending them too much and then you've got bender back you're sort of forcing the metal about and you're going to make it weak and brittle so you're probably better off not bending it enough and then having to adjust it but as usual i got it just about right because um because i'm a wizard or did i <laughs> yeah no, i didn't i got bend a bit more <laughs> okay so just a little bit more i need to go around it again uh, but that's that's the best way i think bending it back like i just said bending it back too much and then trying to straighten it up again that's a worse way to work so now that stone's dropping right down on the bezel i can see and the claws are still really close to the corners of the stone but they're not hitting the stone um i can see exactly where the stone sits at the height on the claws so i'm going to mark the claws and i know exactly where to cut a groove into them and i'll do that literally just by pushing holding the mount and then pushing my finger on top of it making sure it's perfectly flat, exactly in a position where I want it to set, be set. And then I'm gonna get something sharp and just scratch a little line on the side, right in the middle of the girdle. So now with the marks, I've got the marks on the claw. I'm gonna set my dividers from the top of the claws. I guess you should, before starting any of this, like going back to the start of the video, just pretend this is the very first thing I said, <laughs> Uh, get your claws the same length that will help you at this stage because you can uh, set your dividers down a certain length for the top of the claw you're hitting the same distance every time if your claws are different lengths it's all going to be they're not going to be your stone won't be set flat if you follow your lines so yeah get your claws the same length i'd already done it i kind of overlooked that was important told you i was a noob so anyway yeah claws the same length and then when you get to this stage you shouldn't have a problem so i'm going to match from the top of the claw to the little mark i put on the side and then score a line around the inside of the claw. I need to be able to see it on the inside. Okay, uh, you got your marks on all four claws. I would recommend putting your stone back in and then having a look around every single one, make sure it's all lining up as you expect it to be. Next, I'm gonna cut into a claw. I remember I said the girdles on my stone are really thick on the corners. Uh, so I'm using this heart, like diamond setting burr. I don't know what the proper name is, heart burr. Um, yeah, it's got a sharp corner. It's, it's like look at it from the side. If, if you're setting a brilliant cut stone, that's probably the tool to use because you look at it from the side, it literally looks like a brilliant cut stone. Let's say you've got the angles and a sharp angle would suit a brilliant diamond, like perfectly. Uh, it's not gonna suit mine, but that sharp edge I like because it's accuracy. I can put a little nick in there on all four and then double check my stone again and then see if I need to open it up or down from where I've put my mark. But basically, I've got my lines on there, I've double checked them with the stone, I can reasonably confidently just put a little nick across my line on all four, and then I'm gonna put stone in again and then see, see what, I need, what I need to do next. Now you can't risk cutting too far into the claws, so this is just a little nick. Like that. I'd imagine a full depth cut shouldn't really be more than a third, of a weight into the claw even half I'm starting to even half I would imagine you're making what's remaining left on the side of the claw a bit weak uh, and a stone set in a weak claw like that the claw is more likely to get pulled back if it catches on a thread or I don't know just general wear and tear it's going to be it's going to break sooner than you want it to so just a little nick across my lines on all of them put my stone in no, I still haven't mounted that on anything secure yet. <laughs> as soon as I feel I need to, I will, but don't at the moment. 
So yeah, let's have a quick look. Obviously, you need to first of all check your stone is sat flat, and then see where it is on your cuts. Now this is where I don't know, I don't have experience or training to know if it's better to use a small one because that little flat on the side matches more closely the, the flat on my girdle or someone with settled experience might say, oh no, I always use a big one because uh, less likely to zing around or have a problem, might just cut quicker. But I think this is a bit too severe. That's gonna, <sighs> I just feel like, I feel like it might be easy to use, but I can't, can't really see accurately. No, I'm going for a small one. Uh, let's find out. <laughs> let's find out the hard way. Or I say, I call it finding out the hard way, finding out the best way, experience, make a mistake, good. You learned something. You learn what not to do. It's almost the same as learning what to do. I like, I'm a fan of mistakes. Sounds strange, but you make a mistake and then you learn what to do. And then by the time you arrive with the experience and knowledge of what to do, you've got more experience because you've made mistakes. If you got lucky and got it correct, perfect on your first attempt, what, what do you know? You, you very likely won't be able to do it again. Somebody's made a load of mistakes and then tried it loads of times. They've, they've learned it, basically. The person who got lucky didn't learn nothing. Anyway, so I'm gonna use... Oh, I do like this one, I'm choosing this one. It's literally my smallest one. So apologies, my fingers might be in the way. I'm just gonna, just gotta hold it how I've gotta hold it to, um, to do this. So I'm considering the angle as well. I want, I want it to fold up with that uh, flat. I'm gonna cut into it, sit in vertical with a girdle. So that will be like that. Do I like that? I do, but I cut it slightly wonky down one side. You have to quickly get it right because you can't just keep cutting it and cutting into it and cutting into it, adjusting the height, adjusting the angles and stuff, because it goes, once it's gone too deep, you've got a weak claw and you've kind of ruined it. So again, I've got to respect my angle, or consider my angle. I only want to cut it where it's touching the stone as well. If you start cutting around the side, uh, that's gonna look horrible when the when it's set. But anyway, I'm doing this. I, I'm nervous to just sh show the same thing over and over again. I don't wanna make the video long for no reason. So yeah, I'm doing that. I'm carefully cutting my mark and then every time I cut a claw, I'm gonna put my stone in and then have a look if I like how it's proceeding. I am. I do feel like I need to cut in a bit deeper though, that's all. That's my only thing with my work so far. But it's uh, it's working, what I'm doing. Random top tip. Got a bit of rust on my metal block. Very steamy air in the summertime here in Japan. There's a bit of oil on a rag. Get that rust off. That's pretty much done it, but if it was worse, I would then... See that is clean, it look. Get a bit of uh, emery paper. There you go, done. Just look after your tools, innit? See that? That's all I've done. I have seen setting videos in the past. Uh, people put flats on, like, from where they've cut, going up, they put a flat on the claw, and then that flat folds down on the stone. I do like the idea of it, but I just sort of can't bring myself to do it. <laughs> so I'm not going to do it. But I sort of don't feel like I need to because. Uh, I think it's gonna fold up. I don't think I need to, so I'm not gonna do it, but uh, that is an option you have. You can put a flat on your claw on the top half, and then you, you can push it down and it just sits nicely on the stone. It might be a technique, especially for, you know, when people set st uh, claws and they're going to a point, I think you need to do it then. Maybe you don't need to do it like what I'm doing today. Anyway, I'm not doing it, but whatever. That's something you can look into if you're interested in learning setting. And even at this stage, I still do not feel the need to have that mounted in heat form, jet set, whatever it's called. I could just hold the stone flat. Also, when, when you've got a mount that's not set in stuff, you've got ability to 
sort of nudge it about from underneath if, if you had to for any reason. So anyway, let's get the stone clicked in nice and flat. So next I'm hoping to be able to f uh, get these claws nice and straight up the side of the collet. Don't really want them bending out and then going over the stone. I don't think that looks very nice. Uh, that goes back to the mount. It could be the, the mount is too small, it made it a bit small, or the claws are a bit too straight. Uh, hopefully it's going to be okay. If not, my only option is to cut a bit more out of the claws, but that's limited how far you can go because you don't want to make the claws weak. So yeah, there's a lot you need to consider making things and finishing up with exactly a specific design in mind. I'm going to straighten the claws a little bit and then push the stone in and it might, if I'm lucky, it might just sort of click in position. So I'm carefully bending these claws back, not just yanking on them, sort of watching what I'm doing. best way to do this. Okay this stage is where it might be better to have it mounted because I could just have that there and I could just push one claw up towards the other. Should I do that? Yeah I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna mount it. Okay now's the time I'm gonna stick it down. Okay waffle time, I just want to mention this. I couldn't find my stick I normally use for sticking my heat form jet set on because uh, since I've got rid of these shelves I've put stuff in boxes and in drawers and stuff and things go missing like they do. So anyway, I found this. I'm in Japan, loads of bamboo around. I've got this bamboo stick. I cut it off just above the knuckle and then, I don't know if you know, bamboo is normally hollow, but where these kind of knuckles are, they're blocked off. And that's going to be really good. I did that on purpose, so that melted in there. It's going to be really strong, really secure. So that's going to be a good tool for holding things. Obviously, it's a round section as well. It's really comfortable. Uh, it's going to be really good. And uh, seeing bamboo, it reminded me of a video I recently watched about the increasing scientific evidence for the proof of existence of God. And uh, they're talking about just everything so finely tuned and so perfect, it's hard not to see, it's hard to argue against the fact it's been designed. And they had examples of the Earth, if it was just like 1% smaller, the gravitational field wouldn't be strong enough for our own zone to exist. Another one was water has a very strange property in that as it gets colder and colder, but more likely it becomes more solid, yeah, ice. But normally a substance, when its solid form is more dense, but except for water, water is less dense, so ice floats. And that's a big important thing for our planet to be the way it is. And the way I'm talking about that, because bamboo is so lightweight and so strong, it's such a perfect building material. It's very easy to cut that way, splits that way as well if we need it to. You can make little, kind of little half drain pipe shapes, uh, good for building and water drainage and things. Uh, really good for building any kind of scaffolding or like or shelter. You could easily make a house the size we're used to nowadays out of bamboo, perfectly strong enough. So you can make your shelter out of it, loads of it everywhere, grows in abundance. There's normally vines growing with it as well, which reminds me of the fact that you could make bows and arrows out of it. You can make your weapons out of it for hunting or defending yourself. Um, yeah, you could use that for the main bow and then the vines for the string. Uh, obviously it grows very straight, very hard, perfect arrows out of it. Um, also, if, you, if I took that, if I split it that way and then once that way you get the kind of V, uh, you can peel off little fibers off it and those fibers are really good for like kindling for starting a fire. So you can have a little bit of bamboo this way with your kindling in there and a split in there and you can rub another bit of bamboo up and down it and get the friction going, get the heat go in or like that like you see people do uh, you can start fires with it so you can hunt catch your dinner start your fire cook your dinner uh, eat it in your house you built with it <laughs> there's something else as well oh yeah you can eat it you can literally eat the like I think it's the root source like the roots of a baby bamboo tree you can eat them you, know, you get it in the supermarket it's, it's actually really nice if you come to Japan try it look for look for bamboo uh, raw bamboo is really nice um, anyway so also I found a new one you can make jewelry with it as well so <laughs> it's a jewelry making tool okay so here we are got the uh, got the mount set on my bamboo stick it's crunch time let's get this set so now that's in there uh, again 
disclaimer, total noob. I don't know the correct tools, I don't know the correct techniques. I'm just gonna do what I'm gonna do, take it or leave it. <laughs> if I balls it up, that's just funny to me. Uh, anyway, so I got this, uh, that's literally a nail cut off, pushed in a graver handle. <laughs> just, I want, I want that flat surface, so I'm gonna push it. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say push it right on the end, even though you got the leverage is longer. Yeah, push it right on the end. <laughs> I was gonna say push it down there because you, you, there's less risk of it bending the claw, like making it curved, uh, but it's all right. And then doing the opposite side. Always checking the stone is sitting flat and I'm gonna push these in a little bit and then I wanna check that the um, stone is sat in the, in the grooves because it's not too late to get the stone back out and make an adjustment if you have to. I think I've got you split claws. I'm, I'm learning whether I should try and push both at the same time or do one than the other. Do them both at the same time. And then I'll need to look down it obviously as well, make sure it's not tilting, uh, going, going in wonky. So it's got to be straight, it's got to be flat, the girdle's got to be parallel to the girdle, uh, to the bezel, and then looking down on it, uh, you want it to be straight, like corners go into the claws. Okay, stone is becoming secure in there now. Okay, that stone appears to be in there flat. I'm really full of doubt, to be honest, that I can do a good job, but it seems to be going so quite good so far. All my grooves seem to be working. Pretty good. So anyway, next I'm going to... Uh, if, these, if these were just single round claws, I would get a set of like snipes like that, the chain nose pliers, they're called. Um, well, this stone's a bit big, isn't it? Uh, I, I would do a bit of setting like that, but because I've got these two claws, I'm going to go for a wider, wider pair. But the size of the stone, I'm going to get a bigger pair. He's much better. So wide and a bit longer, probably preferable for the stone. So I'm not, I'm not going to squeeze them like that. I think it's probably an idea to get one side of your pliers uh, alongside the claw and then just push the other side over. Oh, making minute uh, adjustments to them. I'm sort of concentrating on one side than the other. I'm not trying to do both at the same same time, basically. So I'm gonna squeeze it in from my thumb side and then rock it that way, squeeze that in my finger side. You could easily squash them in loads in one go, but I, I'm gonna go slowly and work around it. Because again, handmade mount, you spent a lot of time making it and getting it good. It's such a shame if you just balls it up at this stage. So I'll show you what I've got so far. I found something I don't like about it. If I can show you it closely, like this one, I think that's gonna fold over pretty nice. This one, I'm quite liking that, where it's, how it's cut and how that's going. This one, again, seems to be working okay. But this one, it's like I've got to cut more out the, I've got to cut up a little bit more. It's like the metal's not really, it's not really sat in the groove I've got. So I'm checking the girdle. Girdle does seem to tilt up a little bit. And also, if I can show you this one. Uh, I do feel like it's not going over the facets properly as well. So things I'm looking out for, so, it's better, I know these things are happening, these things are going on by looking closely at it, and I can make adjustments before it's too late. So I might try and tweak the claw, double check the claws going up straight, there's a chance. Well, the corner it doesn't look good, the claws might have leaned over a little bit accidentally. That might have happened. Um, anyway, so yeah, make sure the stone's in straight that way, and then I may pull one claw back a little bit, and we're just with a thin saw blade, just skim down it, just to get a little flat going on the side of the girdle, because it's not, not hitting it properly. So anyway, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm working slowly to try and get it, get it in there nicely. But that, that one, I wanna skim out. 
I'm going to adjust now. So what I'm going to do is just with that, this flat, pull it back a little bit. Don't need to do a lot. And then I'm going to get a thin saw blade. A bit of beeswax. I put a black dot on top of my claw so I can find it easily. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, if I just skim down. So I'll show you what I did there. See that? Not ideal, but I had to cut a bit of metal away just so it can go over the stone. Ideally, ideally, you just cut it correctly with your phrases. <laughs> you have to do this. Um, but at the same time, it's good that I looked closely, found out that needed adjustment, and then did the adjustment. It's not a lot of work, but I just have to sort of carefully do that. So I will get those on the claw, on the stone again. And then I'll have another look. Can't just assume everything's gonna be all right just because you made an adjustment. You gotta check, check your work. I think that's gonna work now, that claw. Yeah, let me see that left one's wonked off. That's what threw my eye off, thinking it's gone off the corner. So I'll straighten those claws up, get it set. So let's get these uh, claws over the stone. I think it becomes easier at this stage because the stone is set in the grooves and you've got it secure in there. If you're happy with its rotation and its angles, uh, you're just simply pushing the metal over the stone. There's still a danger of the stone breaking though, so you've got to be really careful with this. So I'm not squeezing the stone at the girdles, I'm just thinking about pushing the metal down onto the stone. I thought this was going to be a really quick video. I was surprised how much I'm coming up with to, to tell you. Uh, there's a limit to using these pliers. Look, I can't really do any more, mostly because of the length of my claws. But then you, don't, you can't just have really long claws for just for the set in this stage. It's not really necessary, but yeah, so the claws, I do kind of like how long they were. They made it easy to get into this stage, but there's a limit to using pliers. So now I'll go back to my pusher. They're, they're quite over the stone anyway. So I am simply just pushing down a bit more. I do want them more on top of the stone because obviously that's what secures it down. You're not just securing it from the side. You want to secure it down, I'm really doing that to it. So I pushed them right down on the stone. I thought, why not? I'll just push them all the way. It that's, becomes really important that you didn't cut in too much. I do still now at this stage feel like I cut in a little bit more, but anyway, I didn't. And uh, it's probably better perhaps not to cut in enough than cut in too much. It's probably the better of the errors. You could go either way. Uh, because when you fold them down, if they're thin, if you cut in loads, it's thinner, more likely to crack when you're folding over like this. So anyway, um, see on YouTube setters just snipping claws off. I don't like doing that. I'm nervous of the stone and especially where I've got double claws. I haven't really got control over what's going on, so I'm going to go with my thin saw blade. Same one I used skimming down inside it. Uh, I'm just going to carefully cut them off. You've got to use a thin one because thick teeth will pull the claw about. Doesn't mean it's not going to get pulled about with this one, but it's less likely. So a bit of beeswax and then carefully saw through it. Nope. On a diamond you can get away with hitting the stone, but some stones you really don't want to be scratching your saw blade up and down it. Obviously anything like porous, but uh, even things like aquas and emeralds, tanzanites, really careful with them. Chop these off short. Now I'm going to separate them and then I've got to work on the ends of them to make them look presentable. Uh, separated them evenly. I found one of my corners of my stone that I didn't like. I thought my claws were wrong. It's actually the facets on the stone are wrong. Three corners are really good, like the facet on the corner. Point of it goes nicely to the middle of the rounded corner. One of them's off slightly and it ruins the look of my claw. 
Anyway, so I found that out. Um, yeah, shortened them. Then I've got to my safety back, barrette, donkey back, some people call them, they used to call them years ago. Uh, I sharpen them, I get them flat on the end, but not just go in to the corner. I do one claw, then the other claw like that. So working, flattening the end to the angle of the claw. Let's just do this, do this one a little bit. Um, I am touching the stone, but I'm wary of it. You might want to, I mean, the least you could do is get a buff stick. Just make sure the teeth of your file are not sticking out the side at all. Where were we? This one. So yeah, you are touching the stone, so you need to be careful of that. I know setters anneal, sometimes they get their files and they anneal them so that the metal is extra soft. So that helps not damage stones. So doing that, then they're separated with that point and then I will go around them, taking off that outer edge. Did that a little bit, rotate it over the top of the claw like that and then going in between them, just on the end, because that goes to a point. So I'm using that extra narrow section of the file just to try and get in the middle a little bit. There's another use for bamboo. Make little pots out of it. <laughs> anyway, so I've uh, filed up my claws, I think quite well, or quite thoroughly, but they're all scratched up, they're covered in file marks. I'm gonna go around it. I should perhaps take it out of the, the heat form. I keep a little glass jar, I can put acetone in there. Uh, when you pull these off under heat, it's always a little bit left stuck to your piece, especially when you've got a full eternity ring, lots of little holes that get clogged up by that stuff. So you need to soak things in acetone for a bit afterwards, just a few minutes, and then I'll just soak it in there, go soft, and I just ultrasonic it, and it all comes off. I'll be very careful using anything like this next to a gemstone. And uh, this is quite a hard one, but if you've got a soft one, they're perhaps a better choice for doing claws, getting them all rounded off. So here we are, here's my setting. Far from perfect, I think uh, a couple of claws need to be down on the stone a bit tighter and um, need to be careful with how they're separated. They need to all be separated, like on a square stone, you want the corners, everything matching opposite each other, all a little bit off. Uh, need some adjustment, but that stone is set. I'm for a secure stone, those claws are strong, and then that stone is properly set. Just needs sort of a bit of fine tuning to get the, um, to get everything looking nice and neat. As for security, that's a proper set stone. The claws are strong, haven't over cut them out. So they're on top of the stone. They're strong in their position. The stone is straight from what I can see. Can't see any problems with how it's set. It's not wonky or anything. So I'm quite happy with that. For someone, for my level and experience of setting, that's quite good. But I know for a fact, I've seen top level setting plenty of times. Uh, a top level setter would have done that really quickly, really easily, it would have been perfect. <laughs> no adjustments with saw blades or anything like that going on. <laughs> and then cut up really nice round little beads on top of the stone, all perfectly spaced out. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's levels to this as people say about a lot of things. Um, I'm beginner level and I know that. And if you know that, if you know better, please let me know in the comment section. Uh, cool, so that's it. So that stone set, a little bit of setting practice for me. Um, obviously, but I missed a trick there. That could have been a finished pendant to put in, on display to show people I can make stuff. I didn't do that. I just wanted to, the mount was just to make the mount for a video and the setting is just for doing the setting for a video. So there you go. That's a, a set little thing that has no purpose. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. If you mind clicking like, subscribe, helps the channel grow. If you to take a step further, you become a Diamond Mountain member. Look for a join button on the YouTube homepage for my channel. And uh, better than that, become a patron. Dime Mounter, uh, sorry, patreon.com forward slash Dime Mounter, link in the... <coughs> <coughs>